Hi there, Scrap Girls newsletter readers. My name is Laurel Lakey, and today for my Designer's Life article, I thought it would be fun to give you a behind-the-scenes look at how I create some of my layouts. What it is that I look for in terms of balance, white space, uh, arranging embellishments, etc., and just kind of give you a little peek over my shoulder as I'm designing a layout. I know I would love to be able to sit next to one of my fellow designers and watch their process, so I thought I'd give it a try. So what we're going to do today is focus on this layout, which is a layout that um, I created of my little brother, my cute little brother, who is graduating later this year. And what I'm going to do is show you step by step how I created this layout and kind of give you some tips and tricks along the way. Uh, if you have any questions about this tutorial, you can find me on the Scrap Girls message boards. My screen name is Laurel Lakey. It's pretty easy. And you can private message me there or post a question and I'll do my best to get you an answer. Okay, let's get started. First, I should tell you that I'm using Photoshop Creative Cloud, Photoshop CC, which is the most recent version of Photoshop. So if your screen looks a little different than mine, don't fret, because all of the steps that I'm going to show you, you'll be able to recreate in your own program. It may not be you know, exactly in the same location on your screen, but you'll still be able to do the steps. So what I'm going to do first is create a new document in the size of the layout that I want, which in this case is 12 by 12. So I'm going to go up to File, choose New, and choose 12 inches by 12 inches, and make sure that my resolution is set to 300 pixels per inch. Then click OK, and here is my new document ready to start. Now what I need to do is pull my Scrap Simple paper template, the hexes, onto my layout. So I'm going to open the paper template and click and drag the file onto my layout. Now here's a tip. If you hold down the Shift key while you're dragging your paper template onto your layout, Photoshop will automatically center the template for you onto your layout. That way you don't have to worry about lining up the edges and it just is really nice. Next, I'm going to choose my first paper, which will be this solid aqua color you can see on the original layout. So I'll open the aqua paper, and using that same shift, click, and drag technique, I'm going to drag it right onto my layout. Now I'm going to come up to my layers palette and click on the eye icon next to my paper layer. This will change the paper's visibility because right now I just want to see this paper template layer. So I'm going to click on my paper template layer and what I want to do is choose all of the hexagons of one color on this paper template. So to do that I will select my magic wand tool which is the keyboard shortcut is W and the default goes to this top quick selection tool but if I hold down uh, my mouse button and bring it over to to choose magic wand tool, that's the one that I want to use, so I'm going to click on that. So I'm going to make sure that contiguous up here is unchecked, and then I'm going to click on the gray color in my paper template. Then you can see the marching ants will go all around all of the hexagons with that same gray color. So next what I'm going to do is come back to my layers palette and click on the eye icon next to my paper layer so that I can see it again you'll see that the marching ants are still selecting the hexagons, but now that the paper layer is active, as I click on it, um, the, 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 this is the layer that it's going to cut out, which is what we're going to do next. Now, because I want to keep this selection of the hexagons, instead of deleting it, I'll go ahead and inverse the selection so that when I delete it, the hexagons will remain while everything else is cut. So to do that, I'm going to go up to my toolbar, click on select, then I will choose inverse. Now I can delete everything but the hexagons, so I'll do that by going to edit and click on cut, or you can simply hit the backspace button and it will do the same thing. Now what I'm going to do is follow those same steps to turn the rest of my papers into hexagons. I'll start with this red paper, so what I'll do is open the paper, click and drag it onto my layout using the shift key. Then I'm going to come over to my layers palette and click on the eye icon to make my paper layer invisible. Then I'll choose the paper template layer. Next I'll choose my magic wand tool 
which is the con keyboard, con um, keyboard shortcut W, making sure contiguous is unchecked, and I'll select this dark gray color on the paper template. Next, I'll make my paper layer visible by clicking on the eye icon, and again, I'll choose that layer to make it active. I'm going to invert the selection again by going up to Select, Inverse, and then I will delete everything except those hexagons by going to Edit, Cut. Then my red papers are looking like they're good little hexagons should. Okay, to save a little time, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of these papers using the same exact steps that we just went over, and I'll be back when I'm finished. Okay, now that I have all of my papers in their hexagon shapes, uh, we're ready to add the background paper, which you can see in the original layout is this craft colored paper. So what I'll do is open my craft colored paper and use that handy shift, click, and drag. I'm going to drag it over to my layer, to my layout. And so this is going to be a problem because you can see it's on top of the layers palette right here and it's covering up all these beautiful hexagons that we just made. So I'm going to click on the layer and the layers palette and drag it down to the bottom of the pile. That will put it behind all the hexagon layers so they can be seen. And now that we're over here, what I want to do is go ahead and delete this paper template layer because we just won't need it anymore. So I'm going to click on that template layer, come down to the bottom of my layers palette and click on the trash can icon. It's going to ask me if I really want to delete this layer, so I'll click yes. Next we're going to add some dimension to these hexagons so that they'll really be noticed and just pop off the page. The way that I'll do that is by adding a style preset, in this case a drop shadow, and even though I want to add the same drop shadow to all of my hexagon layers, I don't want to add it one at a time to each layer because that will just take too long. So I'm going to use a trick to help us. Um, if I click on this first layer and then hold down the shift key and click on the bottom hexagon layer, then Photoshop will select all of the layers in between. Then I can go over to my styles palette and choose the drop shadow style that I want to use. And as you can see, the Photoshop um, program will go ahead and select all of the layers in between and give that same drop shadow to each layer that we have selected. That's going to save me a lot of time. All right, next what I'm going to do is add the main focal point to this layout, which, as you can see from the original, is the main circle photo. What I like to do with my layouts is have one main focal point, and that doesn't necessarily mean only one photo, but it does need to have an area of the layout that grabs your attention when you see it, and so that your, note, your eye has somewhere to rest. So what I'm going to do on our layout is create a circle shape that I can use as a base for my photo using a clipping mask to clip the photo to the circle. So I'm going to go over to my toolbar tool and choose the custom shape tool and I'm going to choose the ellipse. Now Photoshop CC is different than regular Photoshop that I had been using previously where you choose the tool like polygon rectangle up at the top. Here at Photoshop Creative Cloud, it's on the left. So I'm just going to click on the ellipse tool. And here we go again with that amazing shift key. I'm going to hold down the shift key while I click and drag my shape. And if I do that, it will keep the proportions the same, which in this case will keep our circle a circle instead of turning it into an ellipse or any other kind of shape. So you'll see if I let go of the shift key, I can make an ellipse or make it you know, long or wide, but in this case I just want a circle, so I'm going to hold the shift key down and drag it to the size that I want. I'm going to try and get it to the same space that it is in the original photo, the original layout, that's about right there. And so now you'll see up here in my layers palette, close this over, up here in my layers palette is this shape that is ready to use and it's right about in the same spot as the original layout. Then I'm going to add two more circles which you can see in this original layout here. They both have papers clipped to them. So I'm going to go back to my layout and go back to my custom shape tool. I'm going to select the ellipse tool again and holding down the shift key while I click and drag I'll make another perfect circle 
and then I'm going to position it to right about in the spot where it is on the original layout. And then I'll do the same thing for the circle down here. I'm going to click on my ellipse tool. I'm going to hold it down and drag while holding the shift key and then let go. I'm going to use my move tool and move it right over to this spot where it needs to be. I'm going to look at this one, maybe bring it up a little bit. About right there. Okay, so now that we have our three shapes right here, I'm going to need to clip my photo to the main circle to create my main focal point, and then clip two papers to the other circles as well. So I'll open up my photo, and I'll click and drag it onto my layout. Since this is a photo, it won't necessarily need to be centered, so I didn't hold down the shift key this time. Now because this is a large photo, I'm going to want to scale it down a bit so that it will fit on my circle. To do this, I'll make sure my photo is selected in the Layers palette, and then I will come up to Edit, Transform, Scale. An important tip to remember, especially when resizing photos for your layouts, is to come up to the toolbar and click on this chain icon. This will make it so that we, you change the size of your photo, the proportions will stay the same and your photo won't end up looking wonky. You can see if I uncheck this chain icon and I try to resize the photo myself, I could run into trouble either stretching it or widening it and I really don't think that makes a very good layout. So what I'm going to do is click on that chain icon again and it will keep my proportions the same. Then I will make sure I size it so that it's just a little bit larger than my, lar than my uh, large circle and then I'm going to come up and click on the check mark to commit those changes. Now in order to allow my photo to take the shape of the main circle shape, I'm going to have to make sure that it is right on top of that circle shape here in the layers palette. So I'm going to go over and click on my photo layer, and drag it down so that it is right on top of the main, the large um, ellipse shape. Then I'll simply right click on the layers, on the photo layer and choose create clipping mask and there it is. My photo takes the shape of the circle right beneath it. Now I'm going to move my photo around, make sure that I get everything important in there, right where I want it to sit. And then next I'm going to take the same exact steps to clip the orange paper to this top circle and the craft paper to this bottom circle. And I will be right back after that's complete. Okay, now that my papers and photo are clipped to my circle shapes, I want to differentiate them from the background papers. To do this, I'm going to add a drop shadow to each of the circle layers and also add a stroke to the main photo layer to make it stand out even more. I'll use the same trick that we used to add styles to multiple layers before, however with a little twist. Instead of choosing all the, fo the files in a line, I only want to choose the ellipse shapes. To do this, instead of holding down the shift key, I'm going to hold down the control key or command key on a Mac while I click on the ellipse layers. So that will only choose the layers I click on and then allow me to add a drop shadow to just those layers. So I'll click on the first ellipse layer, hold down the control key, and click on my second and my third ellipse layer. Then I'm going to go up to my styles palette and choose a drop shadow that I want to use, make it a little bit bigger, and then you'll come back and, and notice that all three of those ellipse layers have that large drop shadow that I chose and that's because we use the control click method. Now to add the stroke to this main photo, what I'm going to do is click on just that ellipse shape and then I'm going to go down to my effects um, toolbar here and I'm going to go and choose stroke and it will pop up a um, settings menu for you. And what I'm going to do is change the size of it. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. I'm going to change the outside positioning to inside and I'm going to change my color to a white color. Click OK. I'm actually going to bring this size down just a little bit. Maybe about right there. That looks good. So then I'm going to hit OK 
and you can see that it has the stroke as well as the drop shadow and that just kind of brings the photo out a little bit more from the background. Now because it's kind of encroaching a little bit on the top of his head right here, what I'm going to do is click on the photo layer and move it just a little bit down so that it's not competing too much with that space. Now that the hard part is done, it's time to tackle my favorite part, adding the embellishments and title work. A lot of the times I'll go through a collection that I'm already using and just look for some fun pieces to add here and there to the layout to finish it off. I personally love paint splatters, buttons, strings, and especially you know for these more manly type layouts or ones about young kids. I have two boys at home, so I tend to move towards more buttons than bows, but of course it's up to you. You can go with more ribbons, flowers, and hearts if you like. It's your layout, so do what you want with it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show you. I've already added a few of the extra embellishments that appear here on the original layout, and they're kind of just hidden layers, so I'll, I'm going to add them quickly here. Um, we'll start with the paint splatters. Now, these two white paint splatters are actually two of the same splatter that I just duplicated so that it would surround my photo better without having to enlarge it too much. So you can see there's half of it showing down here and then the other half is up here. Then I added this red photo mask element that's just going to be its own element right here and this was just to add a little bit of texture and interest to the photo um, circle, or I'm sorry, to the title circle right here. And then I added a cute little arrow embellishment that's going to po point to our title work and kind of just draw the eye there so you, it, your eye moves to the title. And then I added three buttons which go here, here, and here. And when you're working with um, embellishments, it's always nice to include odd numbered groups. So groups of three or five work really well. It's just very pleasing to the eye and it tells your brain that the layout structure is complete so that when you look at it, it feels like it's finished and it feels, it just feels good when you see it. Um, next, what I'm going to show you is the title work that I added. And that's simply three different text boxes um, with two different fonts being used. And I thought it was really cute little play on words for this grad and his um, his title for congratulations. I thought that was fun. And then finally, I added the name and date right here on this bottom hexagon. It, you know, the reason I put this on here is just so that it would be easy to tell when the photo was taken and who was in it. Because, you know, who knows, in 80 years when my grandkids see this, they might not know who this handsome stud is. So they will need to know and have a little bit of a, a date and a name to go with it. Alrighty, that just about does it. Thank you so much for taking a peek at my layout design process, and I hope to see you again soon. Or better yet, you can come visit me over at the Scrap Girls Boutique and check out some of my new designs. Alright, see you later.